Yes, I, I think there are, um, there's something to be said for different ways of doing it. And I, 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 I'm, I am sensitive to the criticism that to be too polemical is to turn some people off. Uh, and I recognize that that may happen. I think that different people respond in different ways. And uh, the, the softly, softly, good cop approach, uh, the seducing approach, where um, atheists will argue with religious people in a, a conciliatory sort of way and, and try to, as it were, draw them in, uh, that will work for some people. It's, a, it's a, an argument that I frequently have with my colleagues who are very concerned with science education in America, where the teaching of biology is distinctly under threat over and over again. Little brush fires break out uh, of um, opposition to the teaching of evolution. And many of my American colleagues are desperately anxious to put out these fires. And they, in many cases, have chosen to do it by conciliation of the religious. So they will, they will say, look, you can be religious, you can have your God, you can believe in Jesus and everything else, just add evolution to it. Evolution is not a threat to your religion. Plenty of bishops and archbishops and cardinals and things are evolutionists. And that's a very good way to draw people in, religious people in, to supporting evolutionary education. So if your aim is to improve science education, it could be a good political tactic to be conciliatory to religion and to reassure people that they don't have to give up their religion in order to accept, accept science. Um, there are plenty of evangelical religious people, again especially in America, who believe that evolution really is a, a very strong threat to their religion because they are biblical literalists. And um, so a, a good way to argue against them is to, uh, is to try to persuade other, other Christians to, um, to, to recognize that there is no, no conflict. Um, I actually think there is a conflict uh, because I think that um, the proposition that there exists a supernatural creator is actually a scientific proposition and a false one. And I think that it is actually saying something interesting, profoundly interesting and important about the universe which needs to be argued against. And so I'm going to go on making that argument while at the same time applauding my colleagues who have a somewhat different agenda, uh, whose, whose primary concern is the teaching of evolution, and whereas my primary concern is this, m this deeper fact, or, qu or this deeper question, of whether there are, as a matter of fact, um, supernatural agencies in the, in the universe. As to whether I'm polemical and um, strident and things like that. People who call me strident and polemical very often haven't actually read what I've written or listened to me speak, but have listened to second-hand accounts of, um, of, what, of what I say or, or write. Um, and I also would like to make the point that even comparatively mild criticism of religion sounds polemical to ears that have been conditioned with the idea that you don't criticize religion. Because we've grown up historically with a kind of tradition that you can criticize plays and music and football players and, and cookery, restaurants, anything else you like, but you just don't criticize religion. Why? You just don't. And since we've all been conditioned with that taboo, even criticism, which in any other field would, would be mild, you actually hear it as strident and polemical and aggressive.